Okay, and it is 11 o'clock. Hi, Monica, how are you, honey? We have you all on mute, um, but you can type okay. in. Hello, how are you? Hi, sweetheart, good, how are you? I'm very good, how are you doing? I am great, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Yes, excellent. For how to survive the holiday madness. Oh, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Because we really can. It doesn't have to be so crazy um, as much as we make it so. All right. It is just 11, so we are going to get going, right? I am going to uh, mute you again, Monica, and then we will start. So, so um, for those who aren't here live. Um, I think the people that are here live know me, but um, for those who may not, I'm Mary Vernal. Um, I'm a certified life coach, a certified angel speak facilitator, um, which allows me to help teach people how to talk to their guides and angels. Um, I'm the mother of two teenagers, and I really do think teenagers are awesome. So I know that may sound really, really weird, but I love my kids. I'm very blessed. Um, I'm an energy worker and I just like to shake things up and get people to wake up and realize that they have so much more control over their lives than they ever think they do. So, um, you know, it's, it's funny how we perceive the world sometimes and we just take it for granted that that's the only way to look at things and until we find out that no there's other ways to look at things. So, hi, welcome Kelly. Um, so this is all about the holiday season. And I find, I know for myself, um, we have, society tells us, this is supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, right? We have all these amazing traditions and we get to be with family and there's presents and there's food and, However, and whatever holiday you celebrate, it's supposed to be this joyous occasion, okay? But I know for myself, for a lot of my life, it would just exhaust me. I would be stressed about it. I would be doing things I didn't want to do, and then just being totally wiped out afterwards, and, you know, the thoughts I would tell myself, why did I agree to do this? How come I can't make this better? Um, so many stories in my head about how the perfect holiday was supposed to be and always disappointed that it would never seem to be that way, right? Um, and the chat box is open if you guys can see that. So feel free to um, send me love messages or, um, you know, whatever you want to do, ask questions. Um, if you don't understand anything, let me know. Um, I really want this to be interactive and fun because the more fun we have, the healthier we are and the wealthier we are. So um, that's why we're here to try to just see if I can help you design a holiday season that is going to make you get to the end of it and say, wow, that was really whatever you want it to be. So I want you to think about that. One of the great ways to help design something that really works for you is to start at the end and work your way backwards. So if you think about the holidays and whatever your traditions or whatever your normal MO is, I want you to stop and think when it's all over, how do you want to feel? So just take a couple deep breaths with me. Get out of your head where most of us, you know, we live from the neck up and forget we even have a body that is breathed for us. So take another big deep breath. And think about when it's all said and done, how do I want to feel as I go through the holiday season? And for me, um, I find that I want to feel joyful, I want to feel calm, and I want to feel relaxed. Those are 
my kind of three major feeling criteria as I go through the holiday season. So if you guys can take a minute and think about that, even if it's just one, how do you want to feel during the holiday season? So Monica wants to feel tired but fulfilled and energized for what's next. Okay, awesome. Anybody else have any thoughts about how they want to feel? Michelle wants to feel full of love. Excellent. Scarlett, I want to know I have created a fabulous memory. So what would that fab, what would that knowing, so knowing is in the head, Scarlett, right? So what is the feeling in the heart? What would creating a fabulous memory translate into a feeling? And there's no right or wrong answers. This is all totally individual. Quiet joy. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So I want you to think about that feeling. So have at least, it doesn't have to be three, but have one main feeling that you want to feel during the holiday season. And just tuck that away for a minute. And then we're going to just do a little exercise. So I want you to close your eyes and just take some deep breaths and just play with me here. And I want you to think about and remember a holiday event that you really didn't want to be at, that you were stressed out, that whatever family thing or work thing or whatever was going on, it just didn't feel good. I want you to really take yourself back to that memory. Put yourself there, remember the sounds, remember the, the sights, the feelings in your body what you were wearing. And then I want you to really do a body scan, just kind of start at your toes and just work your way up and notice what sensations are in your body. And keep breathing. And those of you watching the replay, do this with us. It's important. I want you to notice the sensations that are talking the loudest to you. It's just information. And just take note of that if you need to write it down so you're sure you remember it, do that. Stop sharing here. Okay, and then just kind of shake that out a little bit and just let that go. Okay, and take a couple deep breaths. And then I want you to think about how you really want to feel. See if you can conjure up a memory where you felt full of love or where you felt tired, fulfilled, and energized, whatever, you know, that quiet joy, that scarlet, whatever your feeling state is that you want to feel during the holiday season, find a memory where you felt that way. And then just close your eyes and do the same thing and take yourself back to whatever memory that was. 
put yourself right in the scene. What do you see? What do you hear? What are you doing? And just go through your body again and see how that feels in the body. What kind of sensations are you feeling? Just noticing, no right or wrong. And then when you, when you have that feeling, when you have that sensation in your body, just take another deep breath and open your eyes. And I would love to hear what information your body just gave you. For me, when I have <clears throat> a memory of a place that's stressful for me, and that um, is not enjoyable, I get a very tight throat and a constricted chest. And that's, I know that that's my body's signal of saying, wait a minute, this might not be good for you. This, you might wanna see what you're doing here. And when I'm in that place of joy and calm and somewhere that lights me up, my whole, heart just expands and I get what I call angel bumps. I just have this lightness about me and my body just says, yes. So is there anybody that wants to share? You can just type in the chat room what your feelings were of, and I don't want to call it positive or negative, but a feeling state that wasn't so good in a situation and one that was more um, positive. All right, Scarlett got tight shoulders and a stiff spine. Okay, replaced by peace and softness. Beautiful. That's great. Anybody else? There's no wrong answers. It's all just information. Because this knowing this is going to help us create a holiday that serves us better and guides us to these feeling stakes that we want to be instead of being so stressed out. Yeah, it's all just information, right? We're just one big, you know, experiment and research project. So we always we take things so seriously and we really don't need to. It's just all an experiment. So Michelle, can you say more of how you felt uneasy? Where did that show up in your body? Tight chest and fluttering stomach, great. Yeah, and it's really important to get the physical sensation because it's the difference of feeling versus thinking, right? Our heads, and just to throw in a quick um, little piece of my philosophy, is I think we have it so wrong when we say um, body, mind, spirit. I mean, mind, body, spirit, right? And we put that mind first. I think it really should be spirit, body, mind. The mind is so powerful, but it's the last thing we should be listening to because it's really just trying to protect us and help us survive but we're not chased by the tigers anymore. The truth of ourselves comes from our spirit and our body. And so we're trying to tap into that and not think about how we want to feel, but actually feel. Does that make sense? Okay, Kelly, stressed and full of anxiety and like I didn't belong. So how does that stress show up in your body, Kelly? 
What's the physical sensation of that? Monica, nausea. Okay, so you feel it nauseous in the stomach. That's great to know. Okay, that's a good thing to know. So that's gonna that's gonna be part of your signal. And Monica, you feel it in your chest and navel area. What do you feel? Is it a tightness or a constriction or I don't want to put words in your mouth. So what do you feel in your chest and navel? Okay, awesome, expansion. All right, so the reason that we're going through this is because this is going to be the wisdom from which you design your holiday and actually your whole life, ultimately, if that's what you choose to do. Um, that's why we went through this little exercise here because here is where we're gonna start to take action, okay? So now you know what your body thinks right? You know what it thinks when it's in a, in a situation that is not uplifting and fulfilling for you. And you know what it, what it feels like when you're in a place of joy or that feeling state that you're aiming for, okay? So if you're going to start to navigate your holiday from here, let's take a look at your calendar and the things that you're committed to. So I want you to, if you don't have your calendar with you or if you just have something in your mind about something that you're scheduled to do for the holiday season, okay? Um, think about a party you have to go to or something that you committed to do. If it's something you're hosting, take one item that you have on your calendar. And I want you to think about it. Think about what it's going to be like. See yourself there. And then close your eyes and see how your body responds to that. And feel your way. through that activity. Does everybody have one? Are they going through it? Are you surprised by what your body says about that thing you have scheduled to do? I find this most interesting when sometimes I think I'm really excited to go do something. And when I really get quiet and check in with my body, I'm like, oh boy, what was I thinking? And if it's something that lights you up and your body agrees with you, great. That's awesome. Keep it on the list. Go to the next one and see how you feel about that. <laughs> I love you guys. You have nothing scheduled. So how does that feel? Right? How does it feel to have nothing scheduled? See what that's going to look, envision what that's going to look like. And how does that feel in your body? Is that the right choice for you? And right, you know, I use right loosely. There is no right or wrong. There's just different choices. So still anxious with nothing scheduled, huh, Scarlett? Okay. So why do you have nothing scheduled? Okay, Kelly, so due to circumstances. All right, so is there something that you can think about doing for yourself? 
in some way that's going to give you that feeling in your body that's positive. Great, Monica. Yeah. And I'm one personally that needs my alone time. I'm an introverted extrovert, if that makes sense. I love people and I love to be with them, but I need my quiet time too. Breaking tradition, not hide under the bed. All right, Kelly. <laughs> we'll get you out from under the bed, it's okay. So I'll tell you a little story about breaking tradition. So I'm the youngest of six kids. And um, when we're all together, although the numbers have, you know, come and go, we're about 22 people, give or take a few. Um, and we're all together on Christmas Eve. I call it the night of insanity at my parents. So, but Thanksgiving, we all kind of scatter. And so for years and years and years, I had the elderly population. That's who I hosted. I hosted that, you know, my parents and my, my former in-laws, and I always had a few strays, you know, there was always a seat at my table for anybody who wanted to come. So, um, and then it just kind of got, I have, I have one brother who I have had to set some serious boundaries with, and he would be one of the people at my house. And I finally decided that I was no longer willing to tolerate that. So, um, last year was the first Thanksgiving since my divorce. And the year before that, I had decided I'm not going to sit through and have someone come into my house that disrespects me so much. So I told my parents that I wasn't hosting Thanksgiving. And then the next year, I, it was my first Thanksgiving since I was divorced. So again, I wasn't going to go back to hosting. And my kids were going to go with my ex and his girlfriend. And I decided I am going to take myself away. I booked a room, a waterfront room at a beautiful little inn about an hour's drive away from here. Um, and I went up there and I had a massage and I sat by the water and I wrote and I just took the, the overnight for myself and I just relaxed and wrote and I created so much. I got to breathe. I didn't have anybody to, that was relying on me. And it was one of the best things I ever did. And so that's my new Thanksgiving tradition. So I have my room booked for next week. The kids are gonna be with my ex again, and I am gonna go do it. And um, I know I've disappointed people by doing that, um, but one of the big things we always have to remember is that when we say yes to other people, Sometimes that means saying no to us. And that's not okay. There's certain circumstances, obviously, where you understand that you're agreeing to do something because you want to do it for, you know, like for myself and my elderly parents. There's certain choices that I make um, that otherwise I may not, but I do it knowingly. Um, but if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of anybody else. So let me just check on some of these that I missed while I was there. Okay. I <laughs> you're screwed, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hard and I, you know, it's so funny to hear people's reactions. You know, when they, because a lot, a lot of reactions are like, oh, the poor little divorce girl, you know, come with me, come with me. I'm like, no, you don't get it. I really enjoy being alone. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this. I had so many offers of people and I was so grateful for that. But it was hard for people to understand that this was something that I found enjoyable. And do I have any control over what anybody else thinks of me? No. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so is there anything else on your to-do list or your calendar that you have committed to that you don't think now going through this process that your body thinks is something that you should continue to do? Has anybody come across that yet? It's 
See, I love my community. Everybody just comes together. It's so awesome. That's what life's about, right? We were all just supporting each other. <laughs> all right, but here's the thing, Michelle. Here's the reality. You don't have to pay your taxes. You have a choice in that. Right? You may not want to live with the consequence of not paying your taxes, but you don't have to. Right? That's a great example of what we always tell ourselves we have to do, we have to do, we have to do. Right? Of course, there's consequences to every action, but you don't have to do something. And this is one of the tools that the three B's that I use a lot in my coaching practice. So, especially when we talk about things that we have to do. There's a tool that's called the three B's and it's called bag it, um, better it, or bag it, barter it, or better it, right? So when you're thinking about your holiday calendar and your to-do list and you're feeling in your body everything that you have scheduled on there, is it something you have a choice to just bag it all together? Say, you know what? I, I made this decision. I decided now it's not of any interest to me anymore. I'm just going to bag it. And that's the easiest and quickest to get rid of. And if we're at that point and we can let go of that, that's awesome. Most of us are, are so attached to not being able to do that, to let go of a commitment. Um, the other thing that you can try to do um, is see if you can, you know, barter it, right? Say you committed to making, you know, four dozen Christmas cookies for a fair, right? And you decided, what was I possibly thinking? I don't even like to bake, right? But they caught me off guard. I decided, I said I'd do this, right? Well, what's something that you do like to do that maybe you can do for a baker and the baker can make your cookies for you? We don't have to be stuck in the things that we said yes to initially. There's always a different way to spin it around or transaction it out. So if you can't just say, I'm sorry, I committed to these cookies and now I'm, I can't do it, you can say, well, my friend loves to cook, but she doesn't like to write things. So maybe I'm gonna write a newsletter for her and she's gonna make the cookies for me. Or maybe I'm gonna wrap her Christmas presents and she's gonna make the cookies for me. And you trade off with something that you enjoy doing better than the original thing you committed to. Right, does that make sense? And then the last one is to better it. All right, so I committed to making these cookies. I don't like to bake. How can I make it better? Is cranking great music gonna do it? Is making a party out of it, inviting people over, gonna make it a better experience for me to just get through it because I don't wanna bail on it? Some little thing that you can do to make your commitment better and still go through with it. So that's the three Bs, okay? Bag it, barter it, better it. And it's a great tool to use on so many things. And if you still can't come up, if you still feel like I have to, I have to, I have to, then we need to do some thought work on why you really think you have to when your body's telling you this is not good for me. Because we all have that stuff to work through. Okay, any questions on that? It's done a show commitments. I know, Scarlett, and that was a great choice for you, right? That gave you great freedom in your body. What else is here? Bag the BS. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Great way to use the, the three Bs, Michelle. How does that feel? That's great. Yeah, and just being aware of those things just makes such a huge difference. We think we have to, we think because we've done things this way, it's always been done. It doesn't, it really doesn't. Okay, I'm just gonna stop and take a minute here. Any questions on any of this? Anything coming up for you? Um, Any aha moments? 
Yeah, we should all bag and barter more. Yeah. Imagine if we could spend more time doing things that really light us up and let other people do things that light them up. It's a win-win for everybody. I'm not saying just dump it on somebody who doesn't want to do it either. That's why we're all different and we all bring our gifts to the world so we can share them. Kelly and Monica, anything that, any questions or anything before we move on? Yeah, paper plates. That's a big, that's a big thing um, on Christmas Eve at my parents. They have, we have full on all the china, you know, the china that has to be washed by hand you know, the silver, all the crystal wear, it looks beautiful, but you know, it's a lot of work. And um, my dad just turned 91, my mom's 87. Um, so it falls on a few of us to do a lot of work. Um, but again, this is one of those things where, yes, I would love to have it catered and have paper plates so that we could, cause to me, it's about just enjoying being together. Um, but Again, it's important to them. And although none of us know how many Christmases we have left, the odds are that they will have less than most of us. So as an honoring of my parents, I just kind of had to let that one go and say it is what it is and we'll do what we have to do. And, but I switched my thought around that so that it was no longer painful for me to sit there and have to do all this cleanup when we could just be spending time together. Okay. Yeah, Kelly, and it's okay, believe me. I will tell you, 2017, was, my motto was the year of no more assholes. So <laughs> I have definitely bagged a ton of stuff and people in my life, and it's so freeing. And it's just, it's because why not? Why are we suffering for other people? Um, psych that you're excited about the China and thing. That's awesome, Scarlett. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? You're excited about it or not, and that's totally okay, right? Let's see, Monica. Yay, that's awesome. That's great. So good. All right, let's see what we have next here. All right, so the, okay, self-care, right? What, what do you mean? I don't have time for that shit. Really? You don't, you don't have time not to do that shit, right? Self-care and especially in the coaching world and that I think gets so misconstrued, right? Um, I'm not talking about, you know, all the fluff and, you know, just the mani pedis or a massage or getting your hair done and all that stuff matters. And if that lights you up, absolutely. And that's part of it, go for it. I'm not this red naturally. Um, and this just makes me really happy to have red hair. Um, and I think a massage is great maintenance for the body, but I'm talking about really truly getting down to the core of living from a place where that feeling in your body is more so than the, the feeling of lightness and joy in your body is more so than that negative type constriction. And you need your rest and you need to eat well and you need to do things that lighten you up and you need to get rid of the assholes in your life right? Removing the assholes out of your life is the extreme self-care, right? Saying no to things that you don't want to do is extreme self-care. And especially as women, we are so programmed to do for everybody else. And I keep going back to, um, you know, the airplane and the oxygen mask. If we don't put our own oxygen mask on first, 
we can't help somebody else get theirs on. And it's so critical. This was, I think, probably one of the hardest lessons that I had to learn. Because I grew up in a household where the women catered to the men. You know, that's what I was taught. The women did for the men. And, you know, um, that's just what we did. And our job was the caregiver and to take care of everybody else. And our needs didn't matter or came very last. And so there was a lot of, and society still, you know, tells us as women, right? What's our job? Some of it's, okay, look good and be quiet. Bullshit. Right? Um, it's so important for us to know what feeds us. And we do more and more and more of that. Because as we are fulfilled and we are taken care of, then we have such a larger capacity to give more back to the people we love and to help change the world. And that is so key, especially right now. So when you say no to other people, you're not being mean to them or, you know, you may disappoint them, but that's their problem to work through. That's none of your business. You need to say yes to yourself so that you can do what you're meant to do in this world because the world needs each and every one of us to show up fully ourselves, prepared to be who we are. It's not just about the mani-pedi, although that's a good thing to do too, if that's what you enjoy. Some people can't stand it, right? So tell me, what button is that pushed in all of you right now? What, what, I can't do that, I got too much to do. What's coming up? Yeah, we all need to do more things that light us up. Yeah, Kelly, it's tough. Caretaking is so hard. It's so hard. Scarlett's forgotten how to self-care. So I want you to think back about a time when you just felt really good doing something really simple. What's a simple, simple thing that you used to really enjoy? Doesn't have to cost a cent. Just take a minute, close your eyes if you need to, and just think back of some memory that brought you great joy, a simple, simple thing. Anybody think of anything? Yeah. Oh yeah, nothing like a nothing like a baby, new baby coming in. Yeah. Excellent. Sunset. Birth of a grandson, cozy blanket and a good book. Well, Monica, unless you have a lot of kids, I can't promise you that watching a grandson be born very often I, is something that's doable. <laughs> so can you think of something that's a simple pleasure? Something simple? I want you to think of something that you can do easily. You don't have to rely on anybody else for. Yeah, watching the sunset, I love the sky. I've, I've told my kids I'm going to torture you when I'm gone because you're never going to be able to look at the sky again without hearing me saying, oh, look at the beautiful sky. <laughs> it's just fascinating. Okay, awesome. Now, see, so you've all come up with something that you can do and you can add in to your days 
to take that moment of self-care. Doing something that you love and that feeds you is self-care. And so I want you to think about adding more and more of that into your daily life. I'm telling you, it is a game changer. Cool. Any questions on that? Especially during the holidays and crazy times, right? It's the first thing that goes, right? Our self-care, our workouts or whatever, anything we do for ourselves, right? Oh, I'll get to it later. This is more important. No, we need to flip it right? I've committed to myself. I think I'm starting my third year of working with the trainer at the local Y. And I started out two days a week. Um, and then, then I'm up to three days a week, right? And I've gone through my life. I've been couch potato, really active, couch potato, really active, into depression, out of depression. And for me, it's non-negotiable. I get up, I take my kid to school, I go to the gym. And it's non-negotiable because for me, when I don't work out, um, it affects my mental health. And for me, it's really, truly more about my mental health than um, the physical shape of my body. It's great to lift weights and feel strong and get in shape. Absolutely. Love it. But for me, it's more about my mental health because when I don't move my body and our bodies are meant to move, I get lethargic, I can tend to get more depressed, my creativity dries up, and just everything works at a lesser degree. And I just, I feel more alive and better when I move my body and I work out. And it helps that my trainer, who stands about this high, little shit, who used to be a championship bodybuilder, we have so much fun. I'm trying to get her to learn how to shimmy, but she's like, no, I can't do that. And so Bob's up. Let's just start like this. And she just laughs as I'm dancing around the gym with all these old men. And we have a great time. So it's, um, it's so important for me. And that's something that I literally and my family knows. It's non-negotiable. If you got to be to school early, then we got to leave earlier. I'm going to drop you off. And that's it. I have my workout. Awesome. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah. Awesome. All right. All right. Talking about making it better. This is one of the most fun things that uh, Martha, I learned from Martha Beck. So this is an example of how to make your holidays better. It's called dysfunctional family bingo. Okay. So you know this is just a sample that could, you have to fill in your own things and we're going to give you a PDF to download later so you can do your own. So if you know you're going to go to that holiday gathering and your button is going to be pushed because somebody's going to do this because they always do and someone's going to do this because they always do and someone's going to do this that they always do, let's make a game out of it. All right? And then you can make a game to see Ooh, I want to see if I can catch them do it. I'm going to see how long it takes for them to do it. And when they do it, you check it off and you fill out your bingo card. And I'm, I'm telling you, this is such a game changer. Now you can let some people know you're doing it. You can, you know, do it with friends at different parties, however you want to do it. Oh, it's just, it takes the sting out of all those annoying little things that make you go, and it's just something lighthearted and fun. So I wanted to share this with you because again, it's just a way to better whatever situation you're going in. You know, the same things happen year after year. You know, for, for my family, I had a brother who was an alcoholic. Um, and so one of the big things on Christmas Eve would be, is he going to show up? How, what shape is he going to be in when he shows up? And then, um, you know, my other brother, how long would it take him before he was yelling pe at people to get out of his kitchen? And, oh, you're not doing it right. 
or, you know, um, who was going to get in a fight first or how long were we going to wait, wait for my brother to come before somebody said, all right, there's, you know, 20 other people here, let's go. Um, and so all these things that used to be so draining and that now I'm like, okay, how long is it going to take? Who's going to do what first? Let's make a game out of it. And it's just a total game changer. So this is just my gift to you. I love to share it with people. Um, take it or leave it, obviously. Um, yes, it's probably a little sarcastic or whatever, but it's, again, it's just that mind shift. You know this stuff is going to happen. You can't control it, but you can control what you make it mean and how you think about it. So, um, can't read a letter, sir. Let's see, I don't know. I think if I make it bigger, I don't know if you can. Can you guys still see that all right? Can't see the chat there. But we're gonna send you, um, we're gonna send you a blank card, Monica. So you'll have it. Yes, and scream bingo halfway through dinner. Yeah, they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> You can let some of your family in that will find it amusing and not let the people in that it will piss them off and just make it more horrible. So your choice, All right? So we will send you that. And then um, this is just after this, if there's anything that I can help you with, if there's anything you want to continue with this, um, we'll send you a link for a free discovery call. I'd love to chat with you and find out what's going on in your lives. If there's any way I can help you. Um, and just see, you know, I want everybody to make 2019 the best year of their lives. Let me just stop sharing here. And um, any questions about any of that? Questions, comments? Did you find things helpful? Was there anything that you need clarification on? Just hit me up. What's going on with all you there? And know that I know how valuable everybody's time is. So I greatly appreciate you joining me on this and playing along. Oh, great, Scarlett. Yes, I always love spending time with you. I'm glad that you got something out of it. It's so funny how we just can sometimes shift just a little thing. Three Bs are a great tool. Absolutely. I learned that in Martha Beck Life Coach Training. You're welcome, Scarlett. <laughs> yep, no coincidences, Monica. I mean, we live in that world of everything, you know, we see the synchronicities and the miracles all around us. It's pretty spectacular. Yep. So grateful you were here. Anybody else have anything? Um, awesome. We finished a little early. So if you have questions or anything else, I'm happy to hang for a bit or let you go about your amazing days and do something. Do that thing that brought you joy. Watch that sunset set, you know, do your research. Curl up with that book and that blanket. Get up and think about painting. All those things that make such a huge difference when you start to add them up, you'll notice that you shift, it shifts you. And then you add more and more and it will just transform your life, I promise you, okay? And if you have, need any help with it, I'm here. It's my jam. All right? So I want you to go create an amazing holiday. And I would love if you would, when the holidays are over or before, I would love to hear from you. Reach out and let me know how it went. And if you tried anything and the success that you had. And if, what a difference it made. Okay? All right, my beautiful peeps. Mwah! Thank you. I'm honored that you were here with me. And go have an amazing day and a fabulous, well-designed holiday season. Thanks.